Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our viewers around the world, and welcome to IBM Security's webinar, How to Integrate AppSec Testing into Your DevOps Program. My name is Valerie Lanzone, and I run the worldwide webinar program here at IBM Security, and I'm here to kick us off. Today, we have Dan Cornell from Denim Group and Michael Smith and Alexi Pipkin from IBM. Before I hand it to Alexi, a few housekeeping items. The webinar is being recorded for on-demand viewing, and a link will be sent out tomorrow via email. On the left-hand side of your console, you will see the Q&A tool, which you can use throughout the webinar to send our speakers questions, and which I will also be monitoring for any technical issues you may be having with the platform. If we don't get a chance to answer your question on the air, we will follow up via email. And with that, I'll let Alexi take it away. Thank you very much, Valerie. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Alexi Pifkin. I'm the worldwide technical segment lead for application security at IBM. And I will be taking you through a first few slides here. And let's take a quick look at the agenda. So we're going to go through a very quick overview of application security and DevOps uh, and look at how you turn some of these concepts we look at into reality. Then uh, we'll get into the meat of this webinar, which is we'll actually show you a, a live demo of how that works. And after the demo, we'll have some time for Q&A. So to kick this off, let's do a very quick overview of what it is that we're talking about here, just to level set. So. I'm sure most of you are aware that uh, DevOps is here. The development organizations uh, are moving towards having faster development cycles, breaking down barriers between development and operations. And that is presenting some very interesting challenges for the security teams. Uh, so I have conversations with customers on a regular basis where security teams come and say, what do you guys do for DevOps? And the reason that that happens is because the development teams come to the security folks and say, we're doing this. We're going down the DevOps path. What it is that you want us to do in order to meet your security requirements? And of course, the challenge is that where you could have gotten by doing a pen test once a quarter in the past uh, for you know, infrequent releases, if you're planning to do multiple releases a week, or even multiple releases a day, obviously doing you know, a quarterly or a yearly pen test just won't cut it by itself. So there's definitely uh, a need for change when you talk about DevOps and securing applications. So this actually presents a challenge, but actually also presents a really great opportunity. What you can do is, you can actually take security application security testing and you can move it to the left, which means you can make it a part of the software development lifecycle. You can do security testing early on and you can also get buying from development teams to do this. And that's essentially doing security more often, brings in better security insight, and also it allows the security teams to address some of their main concerns like reducing risk exposure, having fewer vulnerabilities in production, as well as helping minimize uh, development costs because you're finding these issues early on and you're actually fixing them quickly. Now that said, what is it, what is it that development teams want? Well, development teams want the easy button. They want something to make it very easy and actually almost seamless as much as possible, integrated into the development tool stacks, right? So how do we make this a reality? How can we take something that's been potentially, you know, a manual process done very late in the, develop, in the release cycle and bring this early on, make this seamless, give the development teams that easy button, and yet still deliver the things that the security teams want and need? Well, the answer is integrated into the continuous integration and the continuous delivery pipeline. 
So when we talk about integrating into the CI CD pipeline, it's important to consider that there are always going to be trade-offs for application security testing. Some of the trade-offs you can see on the slide here, speed coverage, uh, ease of understanding versus depth of the results, and of course, do you want to show it, you know, everything under the sun at the risk of false positives, or do you want to focus on the highest uh, kind of risk issues at, you know, at the risk of potentially missing some things and false negatives? So for CICD, it's important to consider that the focus is to find the highest risk issues that exist. It is to avoid uh, false positives or difficult to understand or difficult to prove issues. Uh, have quick scans because uh, you know, CI, CD pipelines and DevOps in general is all about speed. And then pair this with a multi-layered scan approach, which really fits into that defense in depth ideology, where perhaps you are doing these focused quick scans as a part of the CI-CD pipeline, but then you're also doing uh, a bigger, broader scans on a regular basis, which might be nightly or weekly or whatever makes sense. And that's actually also very similar to other uh, testing approaches, functional testing approaches. So this, this, uh, this is actually very similar to regression testing. So then beyond you know, running the scan and integrating into the tooling, it's also important to consider some other factors, which include, do you want to gate the process or pass or fail um, a build or block or release based on some findings and what these criteria are, when is it appropriate to do this, as well as what do you need in terms of reporting and kind of other stakeholders involved here beyond developers and, you know, maybe the security auditor that's helping run this. So reporting is also usually a very big part of this. And I mean, even when you talk about developers, for example, tying in with the defect tracking tool with JIRA, for example, that developers might use is also very important to consider because we've started this potentially many years ago with, okay, we've got to find the issues and we've got to report on the issues, but now it's really not about finding issues as much as it is about fixing the issues in the whole cycle. So now, these, you know, that's all great, but how do you make this a reality? Well, so for with this webinar, we have, we're focusing on two products. They're going to be IBM Security Appskin Enterprise and Denim Group's ThreadFix. Uh, this is one story. This is you know, basically how you can do this in real life today. Uh, there are obviously various approaches and various considerations uh, that you know, are a part of a bigger conversation, but this is something that we think can provide you a lot of value very quickly and help you, um, especially if you're doing some automation today in uh, continuous integration and functional testing. So the first product that we'll talk about is uh, IBM Security Ask and Enterprise. IBM is a leader in the application security testing market, and Ask and Enterprise is aimed at doing very highly scalable dynamic analysis security testing. Uh, dynamic analysis allows finding high-risk issues very quickly and easily. And also, uh, Appscan Enterprise actually has a proven track record uh, for DAST automation capabilities, including uh, integration into DevOps pipelines. The way Appscan Enterprise works is basically like a hacker in a box. We do testing over HTTP and HTTPS in, uh, against web applications and web services. And for the purposes of automation, the primary mechanism for us is actually leveraging existing functional tests, if they're, whether they're manual or they're automated with tooling like, uh, tools like Selenium, in order to both focus the scanning and uh, teach the scan about how to properly interact with that web application or the web service and provide good coverage. And of course, Appscan Enterprise provides a comprehensive set 
of REST APIs in order to automate this. So now very quickly, uh, steps that are involved in a dynamic scan uh, that you'll see today are going to be, uh, we're obviously going to start with configuring the scan. Then we're going to do the explore phase where you know, we can either spider through a site or we can focus the scan on a particular area. And we're actually going to use an app scan proxy in order to basically pipe the uh, Selenium functional tests through the proxy, capture that data, and then focus the scan just on that set. Once we get all the pages to, that we want to focus the scan on, we're going to run uh, a sort of test that's defined by the test policy. And then finally, of course, we're going to get a set of results that then we can act on. So now, a couple of last slides here on AppScan. It's important to consider that the goals of Brain Dust and the SDLC are uh, very different from what you might think about dynamic analysis testing today. Um, I have this conversation on a regular basis where um, customers tell me, oh, well, we already have dynamic analysis. We have, I know, uh, a security team that's running these dynamic analysis scans. And it's important to consider that really the key focus here is very different. The key focus with DAST in the SDLC and DAST automation is that uh, it's really to catch those high priority issues, get them caught and fixed quickly. And that is really very complementary to anything that the security teams are doing using dynamic analysis today. And the, the second thing I wanted to really mention here is the fact that the how much automation can you do and still get a good results with dynamic analysis really depends on how much functional test automation you do today. And if you are doing a lot of functional test automation, that's actually a very good sign that you can do a lot of DAST automation and still get great results with, you know, um, kind of very straightforward workflows. Uh, again, layering scans is definitely uh, important here, considering layering scans, because I often talk to security teams who say, I really want to scan for everything, and that's what I want to be doing within the DevOps pipeline, and give that whole thing to developers to fix. It's important to really kind of, uh, again, have the right focus and address the highest issues as quickly as possible within the DevOps pipeline, and then supplement that with additional scans that are both automated and potentially you know, even things like pen tests still on a, you know, it's like a quarterly or yearly basis, whatever makes sense for the applications. So that's a very quick uh, overview of IBM AppScan Enterprise that, that allows you to do all the testing here and scale that uh, dynamic analysis testing and now we'll uh, take a quick look at ThreadSafe, which will then allow you to take those application security findings from AppScan and integrate it with your current DevOps tooling. And for that, I'll pass you over to Dan from Denim Group. Thanks, Alexi. Hi, I'm Dan Cornell. I'm the CTO at Denim Group. And as Alexi mentioned, I'm going to talk through so the capabilities of ThreadFix, how that fits into how the ThreadFix platform fits into what we're trying to do here, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll ultimately go through a demo. And what ThreadFix lets you do as an organization is to manage your application security program. And so, you know, kind of more specifically, what it allows you to do is first create a consolidated view of all your applications and vulnerabilities. To once you've gathered all this data, it lets you prioritize these risk decisions based on a view across all of the data. And what we'll really be looking at today is it allows you to translate the vulnerabilities that security teams care about into the tools that development teams are already using. And that has a number of benefits that we'll discuss. So what ThreadFix lets you do, again, is to lay out your application portfolio and to, <clears throat> and to pull in the results of all the different testing activities that you may be doing. So, for example, and especially relevant today, if you're using IBM AppScan Enterprise for dynamic testing, you can pull in the results from AppScan Enterprise as well as all of the other testing activities that you might be undertaking. 
uh, you know, static analysis, if you're doing manual penetration testing, if you're receiving third-party uh, bug reports from uh, external sources, all of this data gets pulled into ThreadFix, and ThreadFix normalizes and dedupes this data. So it gives you a single unified view across your entire application portfolio and across all of your different assurance activities. It gives you a view into the security state of each of your applications. From this, it allows you to do unified reporting, and it also allows you to take the vulnerabilities, which are the things that security teams care about, and it lets you translate those into the tools that development teams are already using. And what that allows for is for you to get more vulnerabilities fixed faster because you're taking advantage of the investment that development teams have made in their tool sets and their defect trackers and all of their sprint planning meetings. You, you get to take advantage of that and turn security vulnerabilities into backlog or change requests that they can then deal with. <clears throat> So again, ThreadFix allows you to create a consolidated view of your applications and your vulnerabilities. So across your entire portfolio, you can load that data into ThreadFix along with the metadata about those applications. And then you load in the results of all your testing, dynamic testing with AppScan Enterprise, static testing, manual testing, so on and so forth. And this gives you that centralized view across your portfolio and across all your different testing activities. Then it allows you to prioritize application risk decisions. Rather than sifting through PDFs, rather than sifting through Excel spreadsheets, you have all of the data about your program in one centralized place. And that allows you to start making those hard decisions about what are we going to get remediated and what may we live with for a while. I wish we lived in a world where all of the vulnerabilities that got, get identified could be fixed. That's simply not the case in any enterprise environment. And so ThreadFix helps you to prioritize the risk decisions that you're making based on all the data you've collected across your program. Then what it allows you to do is it allows you to translate these vulnerabilities into the tools that the developers are already using. And I just talked about this, where you can take advantage of the investment that these development teams have made. <clears throat> and so instead of mailing PDFs or instead of coming around with Excel spreadsheets, the things that you need development teams to do to help increase the security of applications, those live inside the tools they are already using to manage their workload. And so security fixes aren't something special or different. The security fixes live in these tools alongside of new features, alongside of non-security related bugs. <clears throat> and that gets application security a seat at the table with the development teams. And that's one of the things that we've found is critical for organizations as they are trying to stand up and scale their application security programs. The security teams may understand or understand the risk, but ultimately it's the development teams that have to do the work to fix these applications vulnerabilities, and it's their responsibility to write secure code. And so when security teams can come and meet the development teams where they're working, that makes them much more effective. Uh, all right, uh, Alexi, before we go into the demo, is there anything that you'd like to, uh, anything like you'd like to mention at this point? All right. Uh, so, what we're going to go through is a demo showcasing the capabilities that you get when you combine the scanning and testing capabilities of AppScan Enterprise and the <clears throat> orchestration and coordination capabilities of ThreadFix and how those interact with development teams. So here we see an AppScan Enterprise. Now, what we've already done beforehand is we've created a focused testing policy. Uh, and what we want to do with this policy is we want to have it look for the really critical vulnerabilities that we can find with very high confidence. As Alexi mentioned before, this is not what we're doing, what we're talking about here today is not a replacement for your security team's program of deep scanning of the application. Instead, what we're trying to do is we're trying to quickly identify serious vulnerabilities that we have a high confidence or true positives and get those in front of the development teams as quickly as possible. <clears throat> so this is not a substitute for, for all of the testing that you're doing, but what, again, we're trying to have a very focused policy, and as we'll see, what we're going to do is use the Selenium test or the functional test that you have for your application to tighten the focus of the testing even further. 
So we're going to create an application, uh, a new application here inside of AppScan, <clears throat> inside of AppScan Enterprise. You know, we can go in and enter some metadata about the application, such as its business impact, uh, so on and so forth. <clears throat> um, and from here, we now have the ability from within AppScan Enterprise. AppScan Enterprise is now in a situation where it is able to run tests, you know, dynamic tests against this application. Uh, and again, Alexi, I don't know if you have any thoughts at this time. Uh, if you wanted to mention anything else about AppScan Enterprise in the, at this point in the demo. Yeah, thanks, Ben. I, I think we're, we're, we're good here for now. And when we kick off the scan, um, I'll mention a few things about why this is set up and what other things you can do in terms of layering scans. Perfect. So at this point, we have an application set up in AppScan Enterprise, and AppScan Enterprise is ready to test. Now we'll go over and look inside of ThreadFix. So <clears throat> within ThreadFix, we'll also create an application. <clears throat> so we'll uh, go in uh, and create a new application inside of ThreadFix, um, and this is going to allow ThreadFix to coordinate back with IBM AppScan Enterprise as well as with other tools. So for this application, again, we'll go in and we have connected ThreadFix to AppScan Enterprise. From AppScan Enterprise, we can get a list of the applications that are available for testing from inside of AppScan Enterprise. <clears throat> we'll connect this application in ThreadFix to the application in AppScan Enterprise. And now we can go in and configure some things about this application. So for example, we can connect this application to the defect tracker that the development team is using. <clears throat> and so this allows us to translate vulnerabilities that we find in ThreadFix into defects that will be created in JIRA. What we can also do is go in and set up policies for how we want this application to be treated in the CI-CD pipeline. And one thing to note at this point, uh, these are not the same policies as you would have in AppScan Enterprise for testing policies. Alexi can talk a little bit more about those later. What we're setting up here are the policies that we want to use when we make a decision to pass or fail a build inside of a CI-CD pipeline. And we have some flexibility in how we can set these up. In, in a perfect world, for example, I might want to say, I always want to fail a build if there are any critical or high vulnerabilities. That would be great. The problem is, you know, I, as well as I suspect most of you, live in the real world where that's not necessarily politically feasible. If you have applications that have been under development, they may have legacy critical and high or other vulnerabilities, and those may be scheduled for resolution, but it's not acceptable to break the build until they're fixed. And so from a policy standpoint, we have the flexibility to go in and say, for example, let's allow no new critical or high vulnerabilities. And from a political standpoint in a lot of organizations, that is potentially a lot more acceptable because everybody can agree, hey, we may have some legacy vulnerabilities that we're trying to get to, but let's all agree that we shouldn't be introducing new critical and high vulnerabilities with these incremental builds. So now we have the application set up in ThreadFix. It's connected to AppScan Enterprise so that it, or, so that it can orchestrate testing. <clears throat> It is connected to the JIRA defect tracker, and we've set up how we, want, uh, how we want to pass and fail the build. In addition, what we can do is determine a policy on how we want to create defects based on the results of a new scan. <clears throat> and again, what we want to communicate to the developers is not everything that happened or everything that was found in the scan. We only want to translate the vulnerabilities that are both serious and that we have high confidence about. And so, for example, we can say, I want, to create, uh, I want to create defects in JIRA for any vulnerabilities that were of severity, medium, or above, <clears throat> and I want to cluster those by the vulnerability type because that is a sensible way for us to ship developers new concerns or whatever that might be. So now we have the application configured in AppScan Enterprise, the application configured in ThreadFix. Now we can go into Jenkins. <clears throat> so in Jenkins, what we can do is take advantage of the build that you have already set up and add some steps to the end of that to incorporate security testing into this Jenkins build. So we've got, again, your build is going through whatever processes it has. 
and in order to build the software, in order to do unit testing, in order to do acceptance testing. What we do is we connect this build to ThreadFix and say, I want to do application security testing for this application as configured in ThreadFix. <clears throat> I want to use the template that we set up, again, that very focused policy for, uh, you know, for doing testing that has those high confidence vulnerabilities. Uh, we set up the uh, you know, target URL, and one of the things that you'll see here is for you can either set the, uh, the, the, the values for the testing uh, explicitly here in the user interface, and you can also, also use the Jenkins environment to set those. And so the goal with that is to make this so you can set the testing policy up, uh, connect it to the previous parts of the build that might be going on, and you don't have to go and change this over time. You know, it inherits the, the location in Jenkins or the environment from Jenkins so that it knows where to test, it knows where files are going to be located, so on and so forth. Now, uh, as Alexi mentioned earlier, and, and this is one of the things that I think is really the most interesting about this integration that we have here, and it's a really great capability of AppScan Enterprise. AppScan Enterprise provides a proxy that allows you to record traffic, and this proxy also exposes a REST API so that you can automate, you can automate its functions. So what we're going to do is take advantage of the existing Selenium tests that you have, and we're going to do two things with those by, by feeding that traffic through the proxy. The first thing that these do is they train the scan. Right, they, so they show the scanner, here are the URLs, here are the forms, here is appropriate form fill data that is going to put the application in the right state. And what it's going to do that's really interesting is if you have your Selenium test at an appropriate granularity, you can feed the Selenium test only for the new parts or only for the changed parts of the application through this proxy, and you can use that traffic to shape the part of the application that we're going to scan. And so what you get from that is a very focused test, both only looking for high confidence serious vulnerabilities, but also only testing a part of the application uh, you know, that, has, that has been modified or that is new. And so that lets us get our testing time down dramatically, and it's that type of a change in the testing approach that allows us to get application security testing into these CICD pipelines because we can get a response back and make a decision on that in an acceptable amount of time. Uh, when we set up a login, again, we can use the Jenkins credentials. We also have the ability to use recorded traffic in order to do a login. <clears throat> um, and so at this point, what we have is the uh, is, the, is the application set up, and we are set up to communicate with AppScan Enterprise to request the tests and to focus the tests only on the results of the traffic captured from Selenium. The next thing that we need to do is to make sure that we're going to execute the CICD policy that we laid out in, the, uh, in, in, in ThreadFix, and we also need to set up the reporting uh, the, the reporting for, <clears throat> or connect to the reporting policy that we have for the given application. So when we take a step back and look at all of this, again, we've connected this application and said we want to do application security testing. We're going to take advantage of ThreadFix orchestrating AppScan Enterprise. Uh, we've set up a policy by which we can make a decision. Do we want to pass or fail this build? And we've set up how we want any vulnerabilities or the, how we want the vulnerabilities identified to be passed into the JIRA system uh, by creating defects. Uh, Alexi, do you have any uh, you have anything you want to comment on at this point in the process? No, I think it's great, and think we can. Uh, we're almost there in terms of kicking it off, and then we'll uh, we'll see what happens after. Perfect. So when this build task executes uh, inside of Jenkins, <clears throat> again. Jenkins is going to go through whatever build process you had, whatever build process you had for the application, um, and it's going to once the artifact is built, it's going to go to AppScan Enterprise, and it's going to tell AppScan Enterprise to kick off a scan. So we can go and look in AppScan Enterprise here. We can see that the scan is running, and Jenkins is going to wait in the build 
uh, while, this, uh, while, while this testing process is being run. And again, the advantage we have here is we've managed to shrink the time window for the testing process by being very focused with the tests we're running and being very focused on the parts of the application that will be subject to testing. Uh, Alexi? Yeah, so while the scan is running, I really don't have a lot of time because uh, the scan does not take long at all to run. But I will mention a few things. Uh, you'll see the details of the scan here um, as it's executing, as a matter of fact. Uh, but I'll mention that the depth of scan, so the security test policy that's being used, as well as the scope of scan, whether you want to analyze just the, the one thing that you changed since the last build, or if you want to analyze you know, a, a, giant, a, a large portion of the application, uh, you can do all of that here. And you can do uh, scans that cover uh, a, a large part of the application uh, through this as well. So we have some customers that are not in DevOps, that they do have automation, and they're doing lar much larger scans than this. So it really depends on your goals versus the product capability. You're, you'll be able to do several layers of scans, really quick focused ones, as well as the large ones that encompass most of the application. Uh, using Afghan Enterprise, and therefore it's really important to think of what your goals are versus w whether or not Afghan can do it, because Afghan can probably do it. It's more of a should you do it at that particular point in time. And as a matter of fact, I'm already out of time because that scan's done, and it took uh, ele one, one minute and 11 seconds. Perfect. So now we go over here to Jenkins uh, to make sure that Jenkins has figured out that the test or that the tests have been completed. Oh, so we can see uh, we can see the results of the test inside of AppScan Enterprise. Um, and so what we see here is that these uh, you know the application test was run, and what we see is there's a failure. And so it's important to understand here this is a failure of the build because the result of the testing indicated that the application's security state was not such that it should be allowed to pass. This is not a failure of the test. The test ran successfully, identified vulnerabilities, and the identification of those vulnerabilities caused this build to fail. <clears throat> so what we also see that came out of this, if we go over and look in ThreadFix, we can see that those results have been brought into ThreadFix. Um, you know, we've got a number of uh, you know, three critical vulnerabilities that were identified. And what we can also see is that we have automatically created defects in the JIRA system that this development team is using, and we've clustered them by the vulnerability type, which again is how we set up the reporting uh, configuration before we started here. So what we've done is, as a result of this uh, new build that was checked in, We've done very targeted application security scanning. We failed the build because the changes as that were introduced as part of this build introduced security vulnerabilities. And we've gone full circle and taken the result of that testing and automatically created tickets in JIRA so the development team knows the things that they need to fix in order to get the build moving forward. And that's the real power that we see with this combination of AppScan Enterprise and ThreadFix. Uh, you know, ThreadFix allows you to orchestrate and coordinate between these very popular development tools, such as Jenkins and such as Jira, and it allows you to introduce the concept of application security testing alongside all of the other you know, quality testing, performance testing, whatever testing you might be doing as part of a build. And this makes it much easier to start getting development teams to incorporate security testing. And as Alexi talked about before, this is a great way to take advantage of the transition organizations are making to DevOps and the adoption of these new technologies the adoption of these new techniques, this allows you to get security or application security a seat at the table alongside of all of the other initiatives that are rolled up as part of this transition to DevOps. All right. So, Alexi, do you want to talk a bit about, uh, I don't know if you have any follow-up on the demo or if you wanted to talk about where CICD testing fits in the, uh, you know, in, in the overall application security program? Yeah, absolutely. So thanks, Dan. Um, you should uh, I'll see if I can switch to the slide here. All right, perfect. So um, as 
just to wrap up the demo here and the session, um, as we discussed, um, there's a lot more to a comprehensive application security program than CICD testing. As a matter of fact, even with the CICD pipe or testing within the CICD pipeline, what that looks like really depends on your goals and what, where you are in the DevOps journey today. Uh, really, the, the main goal that, that works really well and resonates with development teams for uh, testing within the pipeline is really to find and fix high-risk issues that are related to recent changes in the code. However, full programs also you know, include multiple or multi-layered scans, uh, dynamic as well as static, uh, as well as other technologies. Uh, manual assessments and code review are also part of this, as are pen tests, threat modeling, and a whole bunch of other things. So we're not really trying to say here that this is, you know, one, you know, the only thing you'll ever need. Uh, but it is something that we wanted to show you because it, it really does provide a lot of value very quickly, especially if you are already farther along on that automation journey. So if you have um, uh, and you, you know, some of the things that we've discussed are also covered in uh, these additional resources that you see here on the slide. Uh, my email address as well as Dan e Dan's email address are uh, on the slide here as well at the bottom. And now um, I, I think we'll move over to the Q&A. And if you have any questions, please do uh, go ahead and ask in the chat or in the Q&A section. Looks like we have a question here, uh, let's see, about uh, in the configuration of the scan, setting up uh, CSERF, uh, CSERF tokens? Yeah, so for CSRF tokens, uh, there, were, there were a few questions. And, uh, this is a deeper discussion than uh, you know, we wanted to cover in this webinar, but uh, AppScan does absolutely understand and work with CSRF tokens. Uh, it really depends what exactly you have to do really depends on uh, how you're using the tokens, where the tokens are, but I can make a general statement and tell you that we are able to track and update CSRF tokens and still do automated scanning on the applications that do use those CSRF tokens. Uh, there, I see there's another question about uh, this being somewhat equivalent to incremental uh, static analysis testing, and if, whether it is or not. And I would say that it absolutely is uh, somewhat equivalent to incremental static analysis testing, because you are really looking at the most recent changes made to the application, and you can focus the scan just on those changes. And Depending on how you're doing things, you may actually even be able to get more value out of these little quick dynamic scans because of the way they operate, uh, being basically a hacker in a box outside of the application, it tests uh, pretty much you know everything that's between app scan and the application, including the web application server, and, as well as the application itself, and it shows you only vulnerabilities that it basically was able to uh, expose, providing you with the proof of exploit, so you have generally a higher confidence in dynamic analysis findings with the right policy than you may in some static analysis findings, which are a bit more theoretical. Uh, Valerie, I think there's a question about the slides and how folks would get access to the slides. Um, hi, everyone. Sorry, I, I was on mute. But yes, the slides will be made available tomorrow with a link to the on-demand webinar. Uh, 
see a question here asking if it was AppScan or ThreadFix that opened the Jira ticket. Uh, it was it was ThreadFix that um, that opened the Jira ticket. The ThreadFix essentially did the orchestration between Jenkins making the request for the scan, sent that to uh, AppScan Enterprise, which did the testing, uh, pulled the results from AppScan Enterprise over to ThreadFix, did the policy evaluation, and then both created the Jira tickets as well as reported to Jenkins that the build should fail based on the CICD policy that had been set up. So that was kind of the flow of, of, of traffic or events. And there is also a question on uh, best practices around um, coverage for the for the applications for the purpose of testing. I think you know that's a great question, and we do have some best practices uh, that are covered in a different presentation. But the one thing I'll tell you that generally it's really best to kind of have a separate conversation uh, around kind of what your specific needs are. And you know we can definitely help you structure a conversation and you know take the the rec or we can kind of articulate the recommended approach because it, it's really there's a lot of uh, variation between organizations and it's you know it's it's would be more valuable to give you an answer based on your particular environment. Um, I see another question here around REST API uh, within African Enterprise, I believe. So uh, REST API and African Enterprise allow you to do a very, very broad uh, scan configuration. Uh, you're able to basically modify any, any part of the scan that you like through REST API. And then it also allows you to obviously kick off the scan as well as pull down the results and then, you know, operating the results. So it's very extensive. So I see um, I see a question about uh, further Jenkins configuration. I think it would be best to discuss that, again, based on your particular requirements. Uh, question about ideal user of the product, developer or application security. Uh, for uh, IBM for, for AppScan Enterprise, it's really either or. Uh, the product is very flexible. I mean, generally, it's good to have some sort of oversight from somebody with security experience, but we do have teams that are uh, development teams, and they're by far the primary user, as well as we have teams where it's, they're doing centralized scanning by the security team with AppScan Enterprise as well. So it's really the gamut. And the difference is just in how you use the product and the, your goals, essentially. And Alexi, one thing I might add here is with the, if you look at using AppScan Enterprise in conjunction with ThreadFix, what we typically see most frequently, at least with ThreadFix uh, and with the AppScan Enterprise environments we interact with, is those are typically owned, uh, most frequently run by the security teams. But if you look at what we've done here with the Jenkins plugin and the integration with Jira, what we've tried to do is to make it much easier for developers to consume the, uh, you know, the, the really extensive capabilities of AppScan AppScan Enterprise. So we want to make it really easy for them to integrate application security testing into their DevOps pipelines. And so if you look at the you know, kind of sequence of, of events, what we're trying to do here is to make it much easier for those organizations to take advantage of application security testing, or the dev organizations to take advantage of application security testing. Now, there's a, also a follow-up question about being able to take a list of um, IP addresses and or perhaps URLs and uh, run a scan on all of those, a pre-configured scan on all of those. The answer is uh, you could. Uh, we have actually some customers that do this. However, it, it is good to know that AppScan Enterprise is not really meant for kind of, I you know, like a, 
network scanner style testing, it really provides uh, much better results if you ha if you know something about the application. So generally, integrating with some sort of QA testing or development processes is going to give you uh, kind of a it's a better focus for apps in enterprise specifically than you know like throwing a hundred IP addresses at it or URLs and saying go scan find something. And I think there's a question also, uh, Dan, about whether or not ThreadFix then also provides the ability to integrate Jenkins and Jira with other application security products. And I think the answer to it is yes, it does. As a matter of fact, Appscan Enterprise can help with this in some ways as well, but I mean, that's really one of the main goals of ThreadFix, right? Uh, that's correct. Yeah. So, uh, so, so ThreadFix again, kind of across the set of tools and the set of activities that you're using in your application security program. Uh, you know, ThreadFix is, in, in, you know, Th ThreadFix kind of sits in between all of those tools and coordinates between them. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so again, today we're talking about AppScan Enterprise and the really uh, you know, kind of cool stuff that we're doing with the traffic recording and the incremental testing. Um, but that, that's ThreadFix's uh, you know, job is to uh, orchestrate between these development technologies and the application security, various application security technologies you might be using. And Dan, there's also a question there for you about whether or not JIRA can close the, or whether the threat six integration with JIRA can close tickets once the issues are no longer found. All right, and so the way that that works is <clears throat> if you, uh, the Jira, like the engineers changing something in JIRA won't close out a vulnerability in ThreadFix. ThreadFix maintains a connection to JIRA and when status updates change in JIRA, so for example, a developer says uh, that, you know, marks a ticket as closed, ThreadFix sees that that ticket has been marked as closed. That doesn't automatically close out the vulnerability. Uh, what automatically closes out the vulnerability is when a subsequent scan fails to find that vulnerability. So inside of ThreadFix, you can actually filter to see, show me vulnerabilities, the vulnerabilities I've found, show me the ones that have been communicated to JIRA or a defect tracking system. And you can also say, show me the ones where I have these vulnerabilities and the developers believe them to be closed. Or find me situations where we have vulnerabilities where the defect has been closed, but scanning is still finding those vulnerabilities. And so, uh, again, you know, sitting between the groups of security and application development, um, you don't necessarily want to take the word of an application development team that they have remediated a vulnerability. You want to confirm that by subsequent scanning. Um, but again, ThreadFix keeps an eye on the systems on both sides of this and can let you know, uh, you know when there may be disparities between what the different teams believe. And would uh, ThreadFix close an issue in AppScan Enterprise today? I don't think so, right? No, no. What, uh, what, what it would wait for is for AppScan Enterprise to do a follow-up scan and for that vulnerability to no longer be, for AppScan to no longer be seeing that vulnerability. That would be the type of evidence that would indicate to, uh, you know, to ThreadFix that a vulnerability had been remediated. All right. Uh, any other questions? I don't see any, any new questions that we missed. All right. Well, I think we can uh, we can wrap up then. I show I see no new questions. So I wanted to thank everyone for joining once again. Uh, Dan and I hope that this session was valuable for you. And if you have any follow up questions or want to have a follow up discussion, please do feel free to reach out to one of us. And uh, I'll pass this back over to you, Valerie. Well, thank you everyone um, for joining us today and thank you to Denim Group and our speakers from IBM as well. Um, as a reminder, if you have submitted a question or if you submit a question that we were unable to get to today, we will follow up via email. Um, and the link to the on-demand recording will be made available tomorrow. 
it will redirect you back to those consoles. So if you would like to access the resources, they will also be available. Um, again, thank you all for joining, and please look forward to additional webinars.